All right, so I am allegedly live and going to start talking about all the naughty things I'm about to do, namely replacing a perfectly working tool with Woodpecker CI. <clears throat> um, it's one thing I could talk about is Windows support and Shift RMM. Also, remember to like the video, subscribe, all that great noise. So let's see what we got for commits. A few commits this week. Um, oh yeah, this one's actually really cool. So one thing I found out is that Trefic, this should have been super intuitive, is that Trefic can do health checks. Um, please say Grafana's loading. <laughs> God damn it. Um... So Trefic can do health checks, and it looks like Grafana is having a bad time, which usually just means redeploy it. Um, do that. Run. We're actually going to re be replacing this today, if we get time. Um, but yeah, so Trefic can do health checks like most load balancers can. They can check the check of an origin and then remove it from the pool of available origins that it can go to. So there's a few commits regarding that. Um, I added some Windows support. This one's really dumb. There's actually a built-in feature uh, to get the X query or the X path stuff. I can show really quick if we get time. Um, and that's going to make it easier to enumerate logs. But one problem I'm running into is that the data comes in fug or uh, the data comes in weird from what you call it. Um, the data comes in weird from Telegraph, and Loki doesn't like some of the special characters. I believe it's quotes, and then that's messing with the log format parser. So once this redeploys, um, should go. But yeah, today mainly I want to talk about replacing Ansible Semaphore with um, replacing Ansible Semaphore with Woodpecker CI. So why would I want to do this? Um, one being secrets management. So there's not a great way besides Ansible Vault to manage secrets. Um, that's the biggest reason why. And the reason I'm not using AWX is I use Semaphore to make my life easier and building custom containers just to run Ansible playbooks inside it and having to deploy a Kubernetes cluster when I have no good reason to do that at home besides getting AWX. Um, it doesn't really make sense to do that. So that's why I don't want to use AWX. Um, Pull March, I don't know if it has better secrets management, but they're both made by Russian developers, which with the current political state of the world, I want to use a tool I could take to a day job if I wanted to. And most of them get uncomfortable when it's just like, yeah, we deal with like Western governments a lot of the time and the that's going to lead to a bunch of compliance issues. So. The main reason why so to see if Grafon is happy now, which it is. So yeah, that's why I want to replace it. Uh, and Drone CI is quasi open, so basically they make much of their source code available, and then to non-commercial users, they will make their enterprise product available. But then if you want to use it in a business, you have to use the community features. And to me, uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. I get why, because like smart people deserve to make a lot of money, but it kind of sucks for me because like, again, I'd want to be able to take this into work and that license, that licensing cost and proprietary stuff is ew. And sometimes CI systems, they will charge per drones pricing is for a developer and you could have non-technical people needing to run automation jobs. So like you would have to license it for each tier one tech, which could get pricey really quick um, in situations I've been in in the past. So yeah, now we can talk about some of the fun stuff I've added, um, which is health checks. So basically Health checks um, are right here. It'll show the origin health, and yay, they lined up in order because I think it's alphabetized. 
but it'll show each individual check here and then it'll show the basically it'll show the average uptime of it and that's a neat little trick i can show quick where basically you just calculate the average over time of a, a one or zero metric so things like the job status in prometheus um they're binary um so they'll just spit out a one or a zero and then if you take that val uh that average over time it will uh give you the uptime so that's a good little hack you can do um, with this metric right here and this row is also collapsible because if you have like a lot of origins or you're trying to get metrics over a long period of time uh, this will break due to having too many samples um, so let's go last like if you query this over the last seven days it should get angry about pulling too many metrics or it'll render funny. So you could just be like, ew, this is ugly and then hide it. And it's the same dashboard right here. So that's what's going on with that. Um, let's go to explore, discard. Um, the next, the other thing that's changed is, let's go to seven. Fresh. To host name. The other thing has been some window support. So there is more, uh, I got like Active Directory, some more performance counters, and what else did I get? Um, Active Directory, some more perk counters, and some security events that should be very useful. Um, why can I find host? do ew because that's my windows vm i don't like windows then take forever okay so this is kind of the messed up data um if you compare this to like syslog on linux because that's kind of the comparable thing or journal ctl it's designed to do singular lined output this is not in a single line so it's kind of gonna make parsing things difficult um, so we've gotten, there's usually about like three or four stages to logging. The first one is ingest. So we have ingestion done, but the like sanitizing and visualization and alerting, which are kind of like the other three stages are going to be fun with this stuff because it's kind of done in a weird Microsofty way and I don't like it, but yeah. I did look into using NX log and syslog and GNR syslog. They didn't really have great packaging or licensing options on Windows. Um, NX log had that quasi open thing where if you have any sort of commercial use, basically you're out of compliance and you're going to get sued. Um, so yeah, and I like to keep things all open source. I understand people needing to make a living, but it makes it easy for uh, compliance purposes that your dependencies don't end up either uh, hosing you or hosing a customer. So things like Apache 2 or even like GPL, it's very obvious what you can and can't do. And then you get into things like the drone license and it's yucky and you understand why Woodpecker forked. Um, so yeah, main topic time. So Semaphore is a great working tool if I replace it. One being secrets management. Um, two is integrating other things with it. So there are use cases where you would want to run like Terraform and Ansible back to back, or you would want to run, and I actually do have a great example of this, is running a uh, like compliance scans or infrastructure as code scans before you actually run a playbook, and then not allowing that to run unless those scans come back clean. Um, so those use cases aren't supported. There's better secrets management. And those are the two main reasons. Uh, drone got ruled out because it has that weird quasi, um, that weird quasi open source thing. And I'm not a huge fan of that. So I avoid it where possible. Um, GitLab CI is a thing, but GitLab's a big chungus app. And there's a, uh, there's a bug with cron right now, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to use it. 
and then I found out that Woodpecker, um, Woodpecker has had a couple bugs that I was having that I was blaming on Woodpecker. It was really Podman, so I spun it up on a different VM with Docker, and it's running fine now. So I'm not angry at it anymore. Um, yeah, I was reading about it to Sleuth one night because he's a huge fan of Woodpecker. I'm coming along now, or I'm coming around to the, being a big Woodpecker fan. Uh, the other thing is, is Woodpecker didn't have support for running builds and pipelines was the other issue. So, yeah, let's see what we can get going now. Um, to show that the Ansible jobs. So this option wasn't there in Woodpecker. You would have to like rerun a previous job or make a new commit for the build to trigger, which kind of sucks. I found out it's not in the uh, current lease, but in the next branch. So this is running Woodpecker next, um, which is beta. There's some stability risk to it, but meh, this is my home lab. So it's doing things optimized for fun. There are also some bigger CI systems that you could use, but those are going to have, like, I was looking at concourse, and you could view jobs in the GUI, but, like, you have to launch them from the CLI, which sucks, because if I'm just going to run an Ansible command on the CLI, I'll just run an Ansible command on the CLI. Um, so I don't get, like, the easy mode, push button, job go, and then I'm happy. Um so that's a big reason why. Yeah. Yeah, so where I'm at right now is I have secret set up. Uh, I have an SSH key set up as a secret, and I also have it fetching some secrets from the environment variable set and kicks. So that's the better secrets management I was talking about where... Um, Inside of pipelines, you can add secrets, whereas in Semaphore, you use Ansible Vault or put secrets in inventory, which isn't great. So I'm also using this as an excuse to have a test for uh, adding the Galaxy roles. So instead of importing the roles from like a local repo, this is importing them from Galaxy, um, which is super neat. And if I need to test stuff, I can just test it on my local. It's not a huge regression for me. But basically, all this is doing is <clears throat> importing or setting secrets up, which is grabbing it from the environment in, these, in this step here. And then step two is deploying Telegraph, which is just including the role from Galaxy. Um, Make sure if you do need to add extra variables into a role, you use public. I spent a bunch of time trying to figure out how to get that to work. Yay. Um, so the reason why build number two failed is that it couldn't access things. I didn't see what user it was, um, but I'm guessing it's because I didn't set the Ansible user. So let's look up how to do that. So Woodpecker is forked from Drone, so you can still use all the Drone plugins, um, which is super nice. Drone plugins. Let's go to Ansible. Boom. And there is one other reason, user. Um, another reason to use woodpecker is that they probably have better metrics so you can make a grafana dashboard out of it and that's like half the reason i pick tools now is because i really want to use uh it has to be able to have a good dashboard to it that's just a that's just table stakes now um so just for sake of being lazy i reused the semaphore user i put in a different key yes i see the keys in tree i'm gonna rekey it after stream Added user to semaphore, or added user to telegraph step. I also need to see if you can do like manual runs. So you run a pipeline, and then when you run the pipeline, 
it should automatically run like the security scans, but then you manually have to click like run the telegraph roll. Um, I know there's conditions and I've set it up before to where it'll only like run the command if something changed, but there could be situations where um, there could be situations where that might not be the case where like you need to run something and only this one thing and not have to run like 20 other playbooks some of which could not be uh some of them could not be item potent too which could cause a bunch of fun issues and i think okay cool i'm still talking um i need to put on music so my headphones don't die but yeah that's there Added user to telegraph step. Sync. Okay. Now we can go here. Go. Damn, that felt quick. Are you drunk? No. <laughs> um, is Urban down? Oh, it's up. So what the heck is your problem? Get Ram or Jubes! Yeah, I just put that in as a readme and put the build status there because I can. Um... Step has been cancelled. What is your problem? Added origin. I wonder if I just like restart the container if it'll stop being dumb. Sudo reboot now. I'm just gonna reboot the whole VM and see if that fixes it. <laughs> Good old IT trick. Yeah. I'm curious what's happening there. I wonder if it's... Oh. I wonder if it's because, like, it's running as the service account. Like, it's running as the application and not as me. And it's, like, a private repo. If I had to guess, that would be the case. So let's see if that holds true. Nope, oh, it's still pissed. I wonder if you can, like, disassociate actions repair repository. Um, add repository. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is Ansible Jobs? There it is. What the heck? I have successfully built with Jenkins and subtly, for example. The other thing I could do would be to, as soon as the job needs to, yeah. The other thing I could do is set up a, I actually just found this out and get, is set up a deploy key and then see if I can set up the SSH settings with that. So, let's see if that works. Cat, um, CD, repos, 
Ansible jobs. Um, deploy keys, add deploy key. Woodpecker. Alright, so that's there. So now I need to go into here and figure out how to set up the git plugin in Woodpecker. Um, Woodpecker CI git. Um. Ooh, I want to play with that one later. Woodpecker based on containers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plugins. Um, official repository, index for plugins, get clone. There we go. <clears throat> so let's do this guy right here. Custom. Wait, custom SSL URL. Um, Cause this is setting Yeah, it's cloning over HTTPS, but I want to clone it over SSH. Um, Submodule. Oop. Clone section. Okay, so you can do URL? Maybe. Um, what the heck? Image recursive true. Okay, this sucks. Can you not use? Could also make the repo public and see if that fixes it too. Um, Ansible jobs, run Ansible jobs, no mirror authorization. Could also see what's happening when you run a clone from HTTPS. Um, get clone. Yeah, it's asking for authentication, which isn't good. Um, so I'm just going to make this public. <laughs> make this. But it shouldn't need auth. That's the annoying part. Um, pipeline section. Yeah, whatever. Um. Skip verify, which I already have. Submodule overrides, custom, custom cert, attempts five, CI branch partial none. So why isn't this working? Going front end. Maybe if I try restarting the oh, wrong window, I wonder if I SSH Aaron, um, system, yes. I'm just going to restart Irvin and see if that fixes it. And this is, I'm guessing, an issue with using uh, on-prem Gitty. 
I wonder why it's not, like, why you can't change the repo URL, which is weird. Images, yeah. Okay, so clone. So now this should be oh, pipelines. I cannot operate a computer today, apparently. Um, yep, so that's loading. So now let's try rerunning that job and see if Git's going to be dumb. Um, Then see if logging out helps too. God damn it. Settings, skip verify. So I shouldn't need to have a username to clone this. Um, so, Gitty authentication failed public repo. I guess let's make sure that the repo is public first. by checking in a private browser. Okay, so that's the issue. So once this refresh is happy, everything's good. So go to our ownership settings, organization, it's a public repository admin, can add or remove access for teams, okay. So this is public, so Ansible jobs. I think it says any files, the language. I love how YAML never makes it on there as like a programming language. I wonder if it's because like they count it as a false positive or something. Okay, so repository, template now, make private. It's not private. So why is it? Yeah, that's for a push mirror. Use external built-in wiki. Default, oh, valid signatures, no, that's signing, well, what the heck, you have a deploy key, but you can't use I wonder if like the tokens expired. And I need to like log in and out of Woodpecker. That could be the other thing too. Nope, still pissed. So it initializes it, does a, okay. Well, 
what the heck? Can I clone? Okay. And drones discourse. Oh yeah, that was another thing I hated about drone is that it's been around longer and I think like after Harness bought them or something, there was some event that broke like all their forms. Um So that was fun. I'll answer my own question. So someone on Stack Overflow has something. But that was for like Windows, so that's not it. That's not super helpful. So maybe the Gitty FAQ is going to be helpful here. Just maybe. All right. So let's go back to here. Restricted users are limited to a subset of the content based on their org membership. Example use case requires most public repos are accessible and browsable by all coworkers. So a Gitty instance that requires Login most allow accessible browser by all coworkers. At some point, a customer. Um, simple way to achieve that without needing to make everything private. So I wonder if, like, there's something in my app any that's screwing everything up. So I'm going to edit that off screen and see if that's actually the case. And then, uh, get All right. There's like a couple of secrets, which is why it's not there. There's like the database password and stuff like that. Um, so I wonder if there's like some global configuration that requires login and that's what's screwing me. Um, so I'm going to log in as root really quick. See if that fixes something. Let's go to... Get to your root account, then do this right here. Um, crap. What am I doing? I cannot computer today. So Gitty, copy, there we go. All right, so let's go to site admin, and then authentication sources, user accounts. But I wonder if there's just like something Yeah, there's nothing like sticking out as far as logging goes. Uh, 
package repositories. So let's see if like Ansible jobs. Yeah, so Ansible jobs is here. It's owned by Shift Systems. It's owned here. So let's edit the org. Public repository admin can add people for access. It's public. But I think public means like, uh, how should I word it? Public doesn't mean globally available, which is weird. So that's what I'm trying to figure out is how to get it to like where it doesn't require a login. Um, so Gitty requires public login um, on public repo. Cannot access public repo. There we go. Um, thanks for your reply. I exported the database. Any news? Require sign in view. Okay, so there is a variable. Require. Okay. So this is actually good. Then we get back to Gitty app dot any. Custom conf does like require sign in. Require sign in. Okay. Sign in view. So what header? Okay, so under the service header. Awesome. So now I should be able to pop open a new version of this once this resets. So basically, this is really, this is dumb that it can't clone it and it can't set up like authentication to clone it. Um, this could be an ignorant thing because I've been using Woodpecker not that long. Um, so that could definitely be the reason why, but it's weird that it can't, you can't set it to like use a custom URL or use like SSH or something to clone, especially if you have a deploy key set up. So and I'm sure you could use like a different image or something and maybe like the drone CI plugin supports it. We'll see. All right, so you're happy. Let me start. There we go. So now the kick scan is going to run. What kicks is, is uh, keep infrastructure secure or keep infrastructure code secure. So it'll examine like. Do you have secrets in your repo? Do you have Terraform or do you have jank Terraform code? You're not using best practices, stuff like that. Um, all right, so now let's see if it'll actually access things. Use this Python 3.8, which is old. Then I'll probably end up having to build my own container for this at some point. That can be future Matthias's problem. Well, crap baskets. And then it actually had the user semaphore. Okay, good. Armin 10.8.8. .8 .8. Um, I'm gonna crank up the verbosity and run it again and see like what it's running SSH as. So make another commit. Um, what was it? Um, plugins.drone.io.
sorry, I'm squirreling. I'm seeing if you can do a custom plugin. Crap, you can't. Or a better plugin where you can like set the URI. Um, you can't, so we're gonna go to the Ansible plugin. Verbose. Let's do this. And then I think two should show authentication. So now we're gonna add that for both things. Then do a commit, sync, boosh. Should probably comment out the kick scan because it's just wasting CPU cycles for now. So yeah, if you have questions about anything going on, please let me know in chat. So now this should show us what's happening here. I do have the user to find us. Oh, God. I think I know what's happening. Nope. It is just one space. Yeah. So it's installing dependencies, and that's all good. Um, oh, I think I know what might be happening here. It's getting unreachable. So I think what's happening, it's reading the inventory correctly. Um, but what needs to happen is that it's getting angry about DNS. That's my gut feeling is that it's not using, it's not getting DNS settings. So the way I can test that, um, so just to make sure, I guess it just has to make it on one host maybe. And it's failing before it's even getting facts. So I know Aaron, is 10.0.0.5 and uh, update sync it go back here Dude, that runs so fast, it's insane. Get hooks are cool. Oh, that's cool. It shows you the changed files. I also want to add Ansible Lint in here, but I wanted to like get it to work first. The other thing I want to test is running my own custom Ansible image, just in case, like um i need newer versions of python or python dependencies that like don't work with python 3.8 okay so we get all that done user semaphore vb telegraph.yaml then we get a bunch of unusable all right what the heck is going on here? It's getting a bunch of permission denied. I wonder if I goofed up the private key. Um, I wonder if that's the issue is that it's not getting the private key fed to it right. So let's go back to the woodpecker docs. Then search secrets. Oh, yeah, because I think you have to define secrets. So I actually have a functioning pipeline. 
Um, so let's go to... It's all coming back to me now. Let's go playbooks. So I think I need to pass this a secret, and that's why it's not working. Woodpecker. Yeah. And then it's not using brackets. Two, which may, may or may not be a problem. We'll see. So. And then secrets are on the same level as image. Yeah. And then it's going to be SSH private key. I'm interested as to why it's structured like that, where you have to define it too. Because I find that kind of obnoxious, and I know other CI systems, they just shove every secret in every step. So I'm curious why that's like that. Added secret parameter. Ah, shoot. I need to add other secrets. <laughs> um, heck was the other one? But at least now this should fail farther in. Um, so secrets. Uh, it doesn't show the plain text, I believe, but let's make sure. Telegraph underscore. Oh, yay, it's still running, which means that it got that hurt. That hurt a lot. <laughs> But it failed differently, which is good. Um, failed to connect to host, load public key, temp private. <sighs> Invalid format, permission denied. Okay, cool. So now I need to edit that secret. Because now it's actually registering that there is a key there, which is good. So I'll commit this, but wait to push it until I update the secrets. So according to the plugin, private key, cool. I wonder how it like wants the, how it actually wants the secret to be set up. Like this is obnoxiously bad documentation. Private key. Use this to authenticate, yes, but like, how do you want this formatted? That's one th nice thing that um, AWX and Semaphore have is like a good way of managing, like, this secret specifically is an SSH key. Um, of images where this is available oh that's cool that you can do that um <laughs> thanks for the chat shelby um now i'm rekeying this after the stream so i'm aware that i should not be outputting this on stream so shut up cat semaphore under key so this is what i did last time copy paste and i think i might have like put an enter or something and then it's getting bucky about the key um so that secret's been saved um so now let's commit this so it kicks off the job and actually puts a telegraph password in added telegraph secret
Remember to like the stream. Then we should see that it's building now. I need to disable this kick scan. It takes too long. I could enable it after the fact, which would be funny. Just to be like, oh, by the way, this failed and your code's horrifically insecure. And you just deployed it. So I think that'd be funny, but... you you. I wonder what happens if you put in latest. Because I think I had other issues with the plugin syntax. I just did whatever um, Drone said to do in their docs. But I figured I should at least get it to like connect before I tried to do fancy things to it. Alright, fails to connect to the host via SSH, load private key, invalid format. Alright, so I think this is an Ansible specific thing. Um, let's read. Group modules, package, Ansible. So where does it show the... Okay, so yeah. Ansible private key. I've never used that. Um, yeah, I've never used that before. That's kind of cool. Control F private key. Um, you may want to use to specify a pen. Okay. So pem and code ssh key so now let's go to our terminal <laughs> i uh shelby said don't tell me how to live her life i would strongly recommend you like the stream thank you it's rude to automatically assume that. So um, let's do semaphore key pen. Oh, that sucks. Um, semaphore key dot pub. Sage key gen <sighs> semaphore under key and then let's try this now. So I need to add this in free IPA. Um, so is it actually already PEM encoded? I wonder. Okay, so yeah. So this needs to go into free IPA. I'm re-keying the server after, so I really don't care. Um, Cause ironically, this whole stream is about getting better secrets management and here we are. Terminal, we want this encoded key, or it's PEM encoded. Um, save secret, and then we need to go to free IPA. Um, users. And I need to do a crap. I need to go to semaphore and add a new key. Cat. Boom, boom. Okay, 
So now if we rerun it, it should work. So if we do a run pipeline, this should work better now. I need to add a widget on OBS to show like what I'm listening to on Spotify right now. Because it's all copyrighted music. Ah, crap. I have desktop audio on. Oh, well. Kick, scan, ran, telegraph, roll. Come on. Selling the dependency map. Hardest part about doing live troubleshooting is you're dealing with secrets no matter what, pretty much. Um, so unless you're using... Did it actually load? Um, so unless you're using something like Ansible Vault, or not Ansible Vault, I guess that could work. Um, unless you're using a really good secret manager, like HashiCorp Vault, then you kind of can't do that. Um, what? I not save this secret? Load public key, invalid format. Okay. Crap baskets. Could have swore it said something. <clears throat> Another way to add private key files without using SSH agent is using. Ew, I don't think I can do that. Um, depending on your setup, you may wish to use Ansible private key. You can also add the private key. Oh, okay. Another way of adding private key files without using private key. The heck. This is H key. Oh, so what? Okay. What's going on here? Because it's getting mad that it's not encoded properly, but it's PEM encoded. Um. Ch -ch -ch. So I guess I could test this on my local, and that would be a much smarter way to do it. So if I do your Ansible, use semaphore, or let's use that again. So let's do private under key. equal to this then do echo dollar private under key. Yep. So that looks right. So now we do Ansible playbook I private key um, dollar sign private key. Um, 
put that to semaphore under key dot pen. Oh, that's not right at all. Ansible playbook i inventories host.yaml use semaphore private key semaphore.key.pem ask become pass. What? What you telling me the manual for? Giving me the business? This is lame. Um, semaphore private key ask become pass or I don't need to do ask become pass I wonder if it's mad because private key requires an argument So it should just be like that. Or I can't spell private key, apparently. <laughs> yes, Shelby. This is very aggravating to watch me not be able to get this right. And it gives me like the nth degree first, which is super annoying. Private key, we'll go through here. Oh, I think it's getting tripped up on like the argument order. So what's the command verbatim that it's running? And I'm listening to within destruction right now. Um, scars by within destruction. Banana within destruction kick, but it's been weird because I've been going like in between weeby stuff russians like slavic or like russian edm and then death metal it's been trippy okay so this is the command that it's running and it's mostly right Okay, so it doesn't like the encoding on that. To require that your private key is not accessible by others. Oh my god. Shamad 600. Yeah, you can tell I've done this before. Um, So yeah, now it's failing because it's failed to connect to host repos, but that's because it can't see the key. Aaron lib crypto. Oh, well that's that's a different problem. But it's happy about the format. So I'm curious how like the key's supposed to work. <laughs> so, um, ADJ0, I'm glad you enjoy watching me suffer, but basically what I'm trying to do is automate, like, having to remember a bunch of weird command line stuff to do things. So instead of having to remember this long string of text and keep it in my dumb little monkey brain, I just want to be able to click a button and then it'll do things to all my servers because I already had to spend a whole bunch of time and effort just trying to like get the automation code to work now I don't want to have to spend a bunch more time trying to get it to like just remember all the command line switches plus it's just way nicer to click a button um, it also leaves a paper trail so in companies if you break something they want to know exactly who did it when how they need to know all this information not so they can fire you but so they could 
um, tell their customers what happened and so that uh, they can prevent it from happening in the future. Most companies nowadays are cool with you making a unique mistake, but if you keep doing things the same stupid way over and over again, you're going to start landing in some hot water. So that's kind of what's going on there. Um, but what I'm getting stuck on now is that I have the correct automation code and the right way to get a tool to run the code. Um, but I can't get it to authenticate correctly because it uses a flag I haven't used before. So I'm curious, like, if it needs a private, how this private key gets defined. So it likes the pen encoding, which is good. Um, and I need to make sure it's still failing on the, it's angry about the format. Um, because right now it's getting mad at like crypto, which basically means I'm using a really small key. Now, go back to Woodpecker. And, uh, let me know if you want me to, like, draw out a diagram of what's exactly happening. I'm be more than happy to do that really quick. So, invalid... Connect to host. What the heck? So it's still loading the public key. It's getting mad. So I wonder if I... If I just load the key in... Um, if I just load the key in, I wonder what would happen. Image... So let's get you to ignore that just so it runs the pipeline straight away and then oh, I have to do like a multi-line variable at you because I wonder if that's what it's getting tripped up on I could also google like drone ci ansible ssh private key <laughs> I should just get the dog to explain this. Um, oh, what? Um, change, warning, added... Ansible error is pretty obvious. You provisioned your SSH key, import it properly as a drone secret, and it worked. Okay. This guy's a turd. The comment I have highlighted, this guy's being a turd. He's just like, well, just do it right. Um, okay. Thank you. Please try again in a key in the format. Open SSH private key. So, cat semaphore.pem. Wait, what? Semaphore key pem. Oh, my God. That was a public key. That's that might explain some things. Um, encode SSH key, and I guess like the graphics. Uh, ADJ zero, you're a graphic artist. Basically, I keep on feeding it a JPEG, and it wants a PNG or a vector graphic, and it's getting pissy with me about it. Uh, SSH private key pen. Um, 
generating and going. So what is that SSH? Sage key gen F semaphore. I think it's outputting the public key. Verify the key. Okay, so this is how to generate it. But I wonder if free IPA will actually accept the key like that. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need to use like WebP or something that at least supports motion. Um, key pem. Um, T R S A M pem. Cat, 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 semaphore, um, semaphore, key, pem. So this is the format that they wanted it in. Begin RSA private key. Open SSH private key. Okay. Pam pub. Okay, cool. So it's still in the other format. Um. Add. Or I guess I can delete, yeah, I can delete these, add this guy, woodpecker pen, set, save, cool, so now we need to take this private key, so I wonder if it's actually accepting, it like, wants that from secret thing it's also really dumb that the docs don't have an example of that um so now secrets edit again open us wait which one did i copy oh that would have sucked <clears throat> and that was semaphore key pen And the other smart thing to do would be would be to test this to see if it at least connects. Okay. So that should do it. If I do a run. Crap, I forgot to kill kicks. I guess I can do that next commit. But they also had the from secret thing, so I don't know if I need to do that too in the YAML, but that was also like a way older example too. Also, Shelby, tell me when I need to stop streaming. Um, I know I'm getting a little close to time, but I don't have to really get ready. I already don't smell bad, as far as I know anyway. <sighs>
Okay. So it's still mad about the format. So I wonder if I do need to do that from secret thing. Um, cat. Wait. Wait. Okay, so I'm going to just for safety. It's still giving me that. It's still saying I have a JPEG, even though I'm pretty sure I made a PNG. Um, back settings. Secrets. So now I go back to the dude being a turd on the drone forums. He did redeem himself, so I should give him some credit. Um, there it is. And I think that matches up how he had it in his Ansible private key. I don't know if it has to be case sensitive. Um, <sighs> changed keys. Save and exit. And now it should create job 16. I'm probably going to hit like triple digits before I actually get this working. Maybe. Did that actually push? Push. There it is. Come on, come on. It's installing dependencies, which is basically other people's and now my work. Um, the other cool thing about doing it in a web GUI instead of on your computer is you get the, it works on my machine problem. Um, there it is. We're running. Uh, you get the it works on my machine bullshit, which is basically somebody says, uh, well, it worked on my machine, so I don't know what your problem is, bro. Um, yeah, so if you run it in a centralized tool, everybody's running it from the same place, and usually you're spinning it up in a environment that's like the same every time. So it's not like I updated my computer, um, so all my shit broke, or all my jobs broke. Now it's all these jobs work. So now it's connecting, so the secret's correct. Um, now it's to figure out what it's... Module, standard out, shared connection... Deploy telegraph. So it's... Shared connection to dot module standard out. Um, so now it's pissed off about the playbook, which is actually good news. So I'm going to remove the secret setting from one runs to run everywhere, which is dumb, but oh well. It's even yelling at me here, like, run once could have weird behaviors. Wait, was I running that in? Okay, no. Okay. 
Um, updated secret gathering. That sounds really funny. If, like I'm saying, I updated the secret gathering of my servers. But now. Push. So now we should start getting... Um, crap. I think that was actually a tab I wanted. For once the Oracle docs are useful. I don't know what's real anymore. So now this... Like, if this gets two steps into the Ansible playbook, I'll be happy. Why does it want to change directory? Also, I like that it's redacting out the password because it's a secret. Um, what the heck? Could not ch dir, no such file or directory. I don't care. had to deal with this before um i need to pull something up privately so i don't have to reset a password because it's a secret i care about but i will show it on the stream momentarily no not this not now okay cool that's happy um now I need to go to data set temp. Um, so semaphore doesn't have a home folder which semaphore is the service account I use because it service accounts are basically they're restricted in other ways, but they don't have to authenticate as hard or they don't have as difficult of a challenge authenticating to things because they can't like be prompted for a password every time. So it doesn't have a home directory, which is what it's getting mad about. And I need to change the Ansible inventory so that it, um, Woodpecker, it's not woodpecker, it's host.yaml. Wait, what? Yeah, I already had. What is this? Bahonky. Um, Ansible cannot ch. I changed her to Humder. Bring that tab on screen. Um, also try blah, blah, blah. Solve the problem now. Dear is my username, so replace this. Okay. <clears throat> so I do need to put a become user in there, which is weird, which I think is in the plugin. Become under user. Yep. Perfect. So I'll add that to the job.
You'll add this to the job. This makes no goddamn sense why this is even here, but... Become user. Let me do a push. Then we go back to Woodpecker. Ansible jobs. Hopefully this works. I also need to put in a counter to do, like, how many secrets I leaked on this stream. I think that'd be really funny, because I do that all the time. I also need to get Connie out of inventory, because it's decommed. Aaron.local.shiftsystems.f um, Sasha's also been decommed, so that's going to be a duplicate run, which is going to make things weird. Then Connie. Why? Why is this not working? Um, Linux... Is this a permission denied, or is this like a... Like an ownership issue? What's going on here? Um... I... Semaphore key pen... Semaphore at Armin. Yeah, what the heck? Hi, how's it going? Um, my one second. I'm gonna go AFK for a sec. And on mute. Alright, I need to wrap this up, but yay, I'm feeling better now. So that's progress. Uh, it was fun chatting with you all. Have a good day. Bye.